let's take a closer look at two industries. This time, instead of using guns as an illustration of a kind of output, we'll look at a company that manufactures and operates amphibious hovercraft on the Isle of Wight. These craft are used in transport, oil exploration, and Arctic rescue, such as this one commissioned by the Canadian Coast Guard. This is an AP-188 400 Mark Dash 400 hovercraft. It is 100% fully fabric hand fabricated aluminium structure. Why does a Canadian authority come all the way to the Isle of Wight to, to try? Is, is there nowhere else they could have gone more locally to buy something like this? Not to buy this craft, not this type of craft. No one else in the world uh, manufactures this type of craft, has the experience in this type of craft. This is going to be operating in the east coast of Canada. They have up to 18 inches of ice in the shipping lanes. And this, this craft is used to break the ice and produce um, a shipping lane. The craft is always on hover, and what it does, below hump speed, it produces pressure wave, which goes in front of the craft and breaks the ice. Ah, so there's no it goes kind, underneath. There's, there's no kind of... Um, it's not a mechanical... Like a it's not a, it's not no, a mechanical. not at all. Oh, no. it's, a, it's a rescue vessel, really. The manufacture of hovercraft requires capital investment, machines, buildings, research and engineering, as well as resources like aluminium, steel and highly skilled labour. A hovercraft is part boat, part airplane and therefore requires a unique set of skills. So a stress engineer, you're kind of looking at three, four years to train an apprentice? Absolutely. I mean, you could get a degree qualified stress engineer Okay, easy enough, but to have the specific knowledge on hovercraft and the rules and regulations on hovercraft that apply yeah. to, to the stress yeah. engineer, uh, it's only experience that yeah. can teach you that. So, so much of what these guys finish up doing, they finish up being having a, a skill specific to quite a narrow area. Can he still find something else in the engineering line? Or is his skill so special to hovercraft there isn't really anything else he can do now? Go into boat building. Anything uh, marine. Anything marine? Yeah. But you wouldn't expect him to go off and be a farmer, would you? <laughs> Say that, our uh, director of engineering is an ex-farmer. Oh, right. <laughs> So it really is possible to move resources from one kind of production to another. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Skilled labour is one example of a resource that's not easily transferred to the production of another good. People who build hovercraft have spent many years developing the skills and experience necessary. So while it's possible to transfer resources from building hovercraft to dairy production, it comes at a high opportunity cost you get a lot less hovercraft for a small increase in dairy production. We can see similar opportunity costs on this cattle farm in Hungary. If it wasn't possible to produce the, the meat anymore, there was a fall in demand for it, uh, what else could they do with these uh, facilities? Could they, could they produce something completely different? Uh, it's possible to do further things here, but they should invest some money and also to, to focus on other things requires new skills, but it's possible. The place itself is suitable to do other things. So it's possible but difficult to increase output. Yeah. Costs a lot of money, new buildings <coughs> required. So while it's possible to transfer resources such as land, buildings and skilled labour to another kind of production, there is a high cost, an opportunity cost of doing so. One useful way to describe opportunity cost is with a diagram. This diagram illustrates quantities of two particular goods and we'll put guns on the x-axis, dairy products, butter on the y-axis. Let's assume that a nation chooses to produce only dairy products and no hovercraft, no manufactured goods. This is illustrated on the diagram at point X. Point Y is the point at which the nation has only decided to produce manufactured goods. If the nation wants to produce some manufactured goods and some agricultural products, 
it will need to allocate some of its resources to one form of production and some to the other. This means that the nation could produce at point Z on the diagram making B2 dairy goods and G2 manufactured goods, like hovercraft. The curve that connects Y, Z and X is called the production possibility frontier, which shows all the different combinations of guns and butter that can be produced using limited resources. A point such as P, outside the production possibility frontier, isn't possible. There are insufficient resources to produce that amount of hovercraft and dairy goods. Points such as Q, inside the production possibility frontier, suggest that the nation is not employing their resources fully or efficiently. At this point, the opportunity cost of increasing output is nil because there are unused resources available.